Sorry, I'm here. When you come on, just let me know. Hi, D. I'm running a little late this this evening. Presence and prayer was so good this evening. Oh, I'm crooked, but oh well. <laughs> Do you have a good day? Oh, awesome. Okay, I'm going to try to put this battery pack in here for my phone so we don't run out of juice. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Let me just try to fix that a little better. There we go. Oh, fun, fun. I'm going to try to pull up the live. on here so I can actually see it. Oh. Were you able to find everything that you need? I had what I needed and I may do with what I didn't so <laughs> that always works right so, uh, one blue that I was going to use was completely dried out it was solid as a, a rock on the inside of the tube so <laughs> that was fun You know what I forgot here? It's my canvas. I have the one I painted. <laughs> now I need the blank one. <laughs> <clears throat> what a busy day it was today. Natty started um, her schooling online. Yeah, that's fun. Because <laughs> we have all these... Um, different apps that we have to go through and use, um, like Zoom and Seesaw, and um, so trying to figure out how to do it, and then they decided to switch it up midstream and use Google Classroom, um, which is so much better, honestly, than um, trying to submit homework through uh, uh, Seesaw. I really, I really like, um, Google Classroom, the way it's set up. It's so much easier. I'm sure you don't have to worry about that with, with your kids, do you? Who else has joined us? I see D and I'm not sure. We have a couple more people. Let me know who's on. Tell me your name. I'm just putting my paint out on my palette and I'll walk through it here in a few minutes. I want to give people time to come on. Somebody was there and then they're gone. Hmm. 
Hope I didn't scare them away. <laughs> oh, how fun! Oh, today was such a day. I don't... Um, let's see. So... I'm still not used to the the lag that you get when you ask a question and then you have to give people time to respond. So if I seem kind of out there, my apologies. Um, so today we're going to work on this fun painting. Let me see if I can move the light down just a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. Um, kind of a night sky and um, we're looking at it from ground level where you see the um, blue bonnets coming up and I'm going to teach you how to do some palette work and how to do some uh, fun uh, flowers using q-tips so um, let me talk about the paint uh, the paint that I'm using today um, is a variety of different ones. Use what you have. Um, I don't want anybody going out and making special trips to buy paint. Um, I just pulled what I had and made do. So I'm going to teach you a little bit about color mixing and how to get the colors the way you want them. Um, and you're going to do it all on your paint palette before you put it onto your canvas. So, um, any white, I'm using a combination between the golden um, zinc white um, and I'm using just a basic uh, all-purpose acrylic white um, when we go and we do the, the highlights on our um, blue bonnets and on the uh, sky area um, and you'll use this to help change your colors lighten them um, we'll use the uh, basic black um, to darken up some of your colors to give you more of a night sky um, I'm using this phthalo cyanine blue I'm just say um, but um, any blue uh, kind of a, a green green blue tint will work perfectly for this so if you don't have this particular blue don't go out and buy it um, just find a, a dark kind of it's a darker but brighter blue turquoise wouldn't work here but a navy blue would work or um, even a, a purplish blue. So you can use that if you have something, something that's just a darker blue. Um, I'm using a yellow, uh, it's a medium yellow. Um, if you have cad yellow or daffodil or <laughs> a medium range, it's got a little bit more orange um, than what you might actually see on the camera. So um, it's the yellow is going to be mixed with the blue to give you that pretty green that you see, that spring green color that we all love so much, uh, if we love the spring. <laughs> um, so we're going to use that. And then um, we're going to use a uh, violet color. So mine is a royal violet. It's a... Um, just what I had on hand. Again, don't go out and buy something. Try to make do with what you have. If you don't have a violet, you can use a red and a blue um, and mix them um, a little bit at a time until you get the color violet that you want. Remember, blue bonnets really are a blue flower. Um, they're not purple. Most people want to paint them purple, but they're really kind of a bluish purple. So we're going to use this um, to add some highlights onto our blue bonnets when we get to the end. So we have that. And then 
my most favorite color, this color, this quinacrinone magenta. This little bottle is like a game changer when it comes to painting flowers, um, especially like roses or um, any flower that has a red hue. This color right here, I absolutely adore. If you don't have this color, you can use a different color, still a magenta, brighter, but it will still give the same effect that I'm going to show you here in a little bit. Um, <clears throat> this one here is a magenta by Apple Barrel. <clears throat> Apple Barrel is like a what, a dollar a bottle, so it's really inexpensive. And when you're just learning, this is the perfect kind of paint. When you want to get a little bit more progressed in your painting and you actually want things to be archival and whatnot, you're going to want to use golden products or some of the master's touch products like I have here. Um, but don't go spend that money right now. Instead, just learn and have fun. Remember my thing, and Dee will tell you this, my thing is let's have fun. Let's be joyful. Let's not worry about how it looks because at the beginning, it's a blank canvas. Just like anything else, you <laughs> determine how this canvas turns out. And at some point, this canvas is going to look really ugly. It's not going to be pretty until we get in there and put the final touches on it. So take joy in what you're doing. Have fun with what you're doing. Don't stress over, I don't have the right color. I don't have the right palette knife or I don't have the right whatever. None of that matters. What matters is that you have fun and that you enjoy what you're doing. And that's it. That's it. That's just, just relax and de-stress and have fun. Okay. So I have put all those colors on my palette paper. I have my water. Um, I want to talk a little bit about some tools that we're going to use. You can get a palette knife. Mine are really old and really gross. Sorry, I'm a painter, so I don't really clean my stuff very well. Though I take really good care of my brushes, my handles get a little funky. So <laughs> that's just the way it is when you're a painter and you don't really, you know, stress too much about the little things because you're really into what you're doing. So we're going to use a brush that looks about like this. It's flat, but it makes... Remember I went over last week scrubbing or scumbling? So this particular brush is going to help you get your paint into all the grooves. It's going to help you make texture. It's going to um, make the paint kind of rough and it's stiff. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Dee. Fun, fun, fun. Relax. Just breathe. Um, so uh, there we have that. So this is... A flat kind of stiff bristled brush um, one of my favorites as you can tell it's been abused and used quite a bit um, then we have palette knives and palette knives um, come in lots of different sizes I have even I got a few that are meant to be used on the wall to put on a joint compound or something like that and I use them to paint with so on this particular size canvas, which mine is a 12 by 12, or actually, I think it's a 12 by 18. Um, use whatever size you have, no big deal. Um, but my palette knife, when I did this uh, blue bonnet picture that I showed you earlier, um, I tended to use my smaller palette knife. If you don't have a palette knife, you can use the back of it. You can use an old credit card. You can use any type of um, hard edge plastic. So if you need to go dig in your recycle bin, run out and get the lid off of an old container and use that. It will work because I have a couple here I'm going to show you. I have an old credit card. I have an old dish scrubber that I use um, the edges of to draw through the paint and to move the paint and to just get the texture and things that I need. So there's that. Um, I have this handy dandy little uh, fan brush. 
Um, mine is, like I said, very abused. It's I've actually cut the tips in here um, so that when I am doing flowers or grass, I can get that look. Um, you can use this, and I'll show you how later um, for making your flower stems. Um, I have another backup brush. You know I like my mop style brush, and I have this one. Um, and this just helps uh, when I want to go and put that white in the sky in a little while. Um, this will help me get that white in there without blending the white out completely. So we'll be using that. We can do some splatters if you want. I didn't do any splatters on the painting, uh, but if you want to learn how to do that, tell me and we can see how it comes out. Um, and then my favorite, the little Q-tip swab. <laughs> this little guy can be used so many different ways, believe it or not. Um, but tonight you're going to learn how to use this to make those little flower beds. Um, so have about 10 or 15 of them handy. I think I only went through six, um, but I use both ends because I didn't mind getting paint all over my hands. Um, if you do, just grab a handful. Let's have fun and it's cotton. You can throw it away and it'll be fine. So um, you won't have to reuse it or anything like that. So. With that, do I have any questions so far? Are we all relaxed and, and ready to just have a little bit of fun and go from there? So I'm going to turn the camera down so you can see what I'm going to be working on. So give me just a moment to do that, and hopefully I don't knock everything offline. <laughs> all right. So here we go. I'm going to raise the camera up just a bit. Oh. And, of course, you fall off. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I told you it would be fun. Um, so, there we go. All right. Let's figure out how to do this here without killing everything. I did it just perfect last week. All right. Here we go. You're seeing my whole room, and I keep dropping the phone. My apologies. Uh, turn it and face it. Okay, hold on. <laughs> okay. Let's see. How well can you see my paper without everything falling? over. This Facebook is telling me I cannot. Can you see that? All right. Do I have your attention? Am I good? And I'm going to bring the light down. And let's see here. Okay. Tell me if you can see everything. Somebody. Dang it. <laughs> All right, Linda. Oh. One more try. There we go. I think that's good. We might be just a little... Something is going on with my uh, stand. That's why. All right. So. There, I think we got it. What I told you about. Okay, and we're going to take some water, and we're going to take a little bit of the phthalo cyanine blue, and not the color I want there, hold on, and we're going to mix it on the palette with a little bit of black, and then we're going to mix it with a little smidge of the white. And starting in my left corner, I'm just gonna start wiping that paint in there, moving it around, not really paying attention to the direction that I'm going. I just want some color, okay? Just lay that color down in there, okay? And I apologize for the shaking. 
Um, our little table isn't meant for my canvas, but that is what it is. So I'm going to get a little bit more of that blue that I mixed with a little bit of black. Okay, you see I'm just slapping it in there. I'm not really worried too much at this point. I just want all that color in there. Okay. So we're just not worried so much about where the color goes. Now as we get to this right side, we want to add a little bit more black to our blue. Okay, and we're just going to mix it in there on the canvas, just like that. So I just loaded my brush and then laid it on the canvas. Okay, so you kind of have two different colors of blue. And we're just going to make sure we get into all that white of the canvas so that there's no white showing. This down. Remember last time we talked in thirds. Well, this painting is basically the bottom third is where the green is at, and the rest of your canvas is going to be the sky. And then we're going to bring our leaves and our flowers up into the sky. So think about your lane in our blue bonnet fields like we have here all over Texas. And all you can see are the blue bonnets on up to the sky. That's the view that we're going for with this. Okay, so keep that perspective in mind as you begin to lay in your sky and your paint. Um, okay, and go back to a little bit of the white and some more of that phthalo cyanine blue. We're just going to lay it in. We get darker the closer we get to our horizon because we're looking at a night sky here. It's always so fun to lay or be out when we go camping and see the sky and how it changes. Um, tonight when we were having our presence and prayer online, we were my husband and I were in the back porch uh, listening and worshiping and just praying along with the church. And oh, it was so, so amazing. The sky was this beautiful pink and light blue and you a touch of the clouds. It was just stunning. Um, Texas does have some of the most beautiful sunsets. So, there we go. So we kind of got that all laid in. Right there I need a little bit more. There we go. See? That was easy, right? So now we're just going to take some more of that white. Everybody with me? Take a little bit of this white. Okay? Just like not nothing fantastic. And right here, say about clouds. Clouds, the most pleasing view of a cloud is when it goes off the canvas. So as you're laying your cloud in, we're going to do these, these streaky kind of spot here in Texas. Um, if you're not familiar with it, um, I'm sorry, but they are like the weirdest shapes. They're streaky and... They're just lines um, everywhere. So here we go. We're just going to go, boom, there's the start of our cloud. And we're going to go right off both sides and just start working that the way you want. And sometimes they go up and sometimes they're more blue or more pink. But we're just going to work with what we have here, which is just this beautiful, beautiful blue. Oh, I like that. That makes me happy. I like how that looks. And take your brush and holding your elbow up a little bit, just kind of fluff. Draw some streaks in there and get that, 
get that white and blending and just lightly, lightly touch the canvas. So can you see how I'm doing that right there? Can you see how that is swooping up and just leaving a streak of color very lightly, very lightly coming through. And do the same on the other side, just, just like that. And if you're not liking how it's working, you can blend that white back in and add some more. There we go. Okay. Very lightly, just barely touching the paint. Okay? So I'm liking how this is looking. Can you see that there? Try to get you a little closer view. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to just, this time we are going to rinse our brush out just a little, not a whole lot, but we had a lot of paint in that brush. Using the same brush, we are going to take some more of that phthalo cyanide blue and some of our yellow medium, whatever yellow you have, and we're going to mix on the blue to get this amazing beautiful spring green color you see that color right there and we're not going to worry about mixing it all together we want it to be kind of streaky you can add a little bit so it looks kind of like that and we're just going to come in here and we're going to start laying it in just making sure we fill our canvas we don't want any white showing Nothing showing through. Just go through and scumble and smudge. Just play with your paint. Okay? Just get all that white covered up down there. Okay? This will be really fast because the fun stuff is about to happen. Okay? And you can get it a little bit darker down here near the bottom. Um, just add some of that blue in there. It doesn't have to be blended or green. You can just go in and add it. Okay. So once you have that all covered, then we're going to do, and this time you don't have to worry about the horizon. You see the horizon. Uh, let me pull. You remember how that looked? So you might think I went all the way up into here with green paint. I didn't. It, green is only here. I came up with my palette knife and with this big brush and just kind of streaked into the blue. So that's what we're going to do next, okay? So we're going to, using the same brush, get a little bit of that yellow and a little bit of your blue. Okay, mix it together, and remember your paint that's already on here is still wet, so we're going to do a wet on wet technique, and we're just going to lightly our brush, okay, just, just, just pulling up, might need a little bit of water, your brush is uh, dried out, and we're just going to begin to kind of pull color up into leaving the streaks. You want those streaks because we're going to utilize those streaks here in a few minutes to make the leaves for our um, flowers. Okay, so we're just going to pull, pull that up. Pull. Just doesn't have to be all the same height. Bury them so that there's a little bit of difference in between, um, just jump around your board, um, make it go up into that sky you created because that gives you that sense of dimension and realism. Okay, and we're just gonna go a little here, a little here. See, I'm not worried, I'm just flicking my paintbrush right up in there. Okay, all right, so a little bit more, 
just going right up in there. Oh, look at that. That's gorgeous. I love those colors together. Isn't that amazing? So, here we go. And that gives you that, that sense of depth and darkness. So when, when you're looking at a field in the dark, you know, there's different variations in color. So you're going to have your dark greens and your light greens and your dark blues that are your shadows. Um, almost a violet, purpley kind of color. Um, so it's not a flat, one-dimension color. When you look at something, there's all different kinds of colors. So the next time you're out and, you know, maybe you're in your backyard or walking down the back road there in, in Wool Market or wherever you might live, and um, thanks, Diane. I love you so much. Um, but when you're out there walking around in those woods and look at the colors, don't just look at the, the beautiful tree or the, the, the beautiful grass swaying in the wind, but look at the colors that God used to make that the way that it is. Identify those tones that we talked about last time, the the low tones, the dark shadows, and the mid-tones, and then the highlights, um, how he uses the sun to make lighter tones. That's what we're looking for with our paintings. Um, so doing that, we go ahead and we just finish this part up because now we're going to come in with our palette knife. How are we doing out there? Everybody doing good? So I'm going to rinse this brush out while I'm waiting to see, hear from somebody <laughs> tell me how things are going. Um, and let's see here. So I have my brush being cleaned out. Dee, you still with me there? Tammy, I see you're on. Are you going to paint this time? Or are you watching, sweetie? Okay, so I noticed something here real fast. I just want to kind of Blend that sky back because I, I hit that nice chunk of white that I had and I really liked how that looked. So it's okay to go in and do a little fixing up if you need to, okay? So oh, I had something in my paint. All right, so with the palette knife. Palette knives are fun. Um, they can be... Um, not difficult, but they can be um, uncomfortable the first time you use it. So, um, oh good. So with your palette knife, the edge is your friend. Um, this part here, the flat back side, is great for um, when we come in here and we're going to kind of do some some rocks um, along the bottom. If you notice in here on the original that I did, you'll see some uh, dark and light areas. This was all done with my palette knife. All of these um, uh, leaves and the stems were done with the palette knife. Uh, I don't know how well you can see in here. But I laid uh, some blue violet where I knew I wanted my flowers to be. Um, so that was my guideline. And I used just the edge, that thin edge of my palette knife. Okay. So for this part here, we're going to take, again, a little bit of this, the blue. Okay. And a little bit of the yellow. And I'm not mixing them. I just put it onto the edge of my palette, edge of my palette knife. And now I'm going to take it across the bottom and I'm just going to barely touch 
or try to barely touch in different places where it's at. And I'm going to come back again and grab some more blue and using my palette I'm going to just kind of use the edge to come in and scrape into that paint just slightly, just slightly, because I don't really need a whole lot. I just want something that's going to be in the forefront. Try to make it so it seems like there are some shadows um, so that when we, oh, I have some black on there. Um, when we go in and start adding in our flowers, then we have some place for our stems to hide like they would normally in nature. So sometimes it's hard to think and talk while you're painting at the same time. <laughs> so I apologize. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead. I'm not too worried about how this looks. Okay, so I have that. Now I'm going to take my green again and a little bit more of my blue, and I'm going to mix them together on my palette until I get kind of a, a spring green color. Um, I want a light and I want a dark. So go ahead and mix up two while you're doing it. Um, not really adding um, anything, but you'll have more yellow and less blue um, when you go for the lighter. When you want the darker tone of green, you're going to have um, more blue and less yellow. So I can't really speak to dimensions unless you're just using straight up green paint um, because I don't have just straight up green paint. Um, so there we go. I have that mix. Now I've got my clean palette knife. I'm going to take a little bit of that, that yellow and kind of roll it. And what I do, so I can kind of show you this, is I slide the edge of my knife forward and through. So you see how I did that? Forward and through. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same with my green. Forward and through. So I get just a nice little roll right there. And then on my palette, I'm just going to touch the side of it to the paint canvas, and I'm going to slide it. See how I got that? And then you might angle it. Remember, nothing grows straight except a tree, and even those here in Texas don't grow straight all the time. Um, you put them wherever you think you're going to want your, I need more paint. Um, if it's not coming off, you probably need more paint. So I'm going to come back in here and do that again. Wherever you think your flowers are going to be placed. Now I'm going to put one right up here because I know I want it higher up. And I need to make that stem a little bit longer. Okay. Get some more paint load it up and then come in and add. Just keep running that across through there. If you don't have a palette, you can get your credit card and you can do the same thing. Just a little bit of paint, slide it across, a little bit of the, the green and the yellow. Okay, and then you can just take it like this on the edge and then come in and do the same. Just roll. And for some, this might be easier because you can kind of tilt it a little bit better and get in there with your color. Um, I know some people like to take the paint like this and do that to make the rocks and kind of turn it and twist it and, you know, slide it around. And however you want to make your rocks, you can use the back of that credit card and it is so much easier for some people. Um, and it works really well. I do like the palette knife. Um, it's easier for my hand to hold on to because it's got a thicker handle. Um, so again, I'm just going to come in here and, you know, if you need to turn your wrist so that 
you can get more paint on your canvas um, or get to your canvas. Don't worry about um, you know where uh, or how much paint comes off because <clears throat> this is just your stems. This is where <clears throat> you are going to um, place your flowers. So your flowers are going to be um, in this area. Um, okay, so a little bit more here at, on this side. Um, and one coming right through here. And some down in here. Oh, there we go. And there we go. Just making some thicker kind of uh, leaves um, in here. I felt like it needed a little bit more color. So I'm just using the back of my palette knife with a little extra color. You get a bonus here um, with uh, the paint. And then we're just going to, again, just on the edge just slightly till the paint comes off. If it's not releasing, flip it to the other side and there we go. And if you can't get it to come off, you might need more paint or you might not have enough paint. Um, so just keep working it until you uh, get the paint to come off. It takes a little practice, um, but you can do it. And if you're getting frustrated, Pull out that cardboard or that piece of plastic you got out of the recycle or your old credit card. Don't use your new credit card, okay? Just your old one. Um, and uh, use that. Whatever is going to work for you, whatever is going to bring you joy, make you happy, okay? So one more here where I feel like we have a little bit of a, a dead zone right there. I just want just a little bit and same here I put quite a few in the other one and kind of realized that maybe I put too many um, you can put as many as you want whatever makes you happiest um, it's all up to you okay so you can put your palette knife away for just a, a minute because I am going to take the credit card again and we're going to get a little bit of our uh, blue-violet color. Um, and I need to mix up a little bit of this blue-violet um, with a touch of black. Just a little bit. Because I want that to be the place that I build my... Um, blue bonnet on. So this is how I do that. I just come in and I add a touch. And it might be kind of hard for you to see. Um, there's just a touch there. And that's going to help me know where the beginning or the, the tip of my blue bonnet is at. Okay. So we got another one here and another one here. So just a little bit of that black and a little bit of your blue violet, okay? Same here, right here. Okay? And don't worry about how big or how small it is. You want different sizes um, because that's what makes it realistic. If you've ever been in a blue bonnet field, you know some are big, some are tall, some are fat, some are skinny, um, some are half eaten by insects, <laughs> some. Uh, yeah, so they're all different, just like we are. Um, so just come in with your your spot there and fill it however you want, big or small, um, doesn't matter. Okay, and got another one there, one there, and I think I need one that I didn't put a stem on, but I'm going to put one there. And, oh, here it is. No, yes, right there. OK, 
okay? So it's like up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up. Well, oh, there's the down. Down, up, down, up, down. So you see how I do that? So you kind of alter them, stagger them, uh, so they don't um, all seem to be in one spot, okay? Put a couple down low where we didn't put stems. Um, okay. That way you bring your eye down to the ground here. So how are we doing? Are we doing all right? Are there any questions so far? Okay. I'm just coming in with my, my palette and kind of let, have let my paint dry down here where we made those rocks. I'm just going back over them a little bit um, to um, touch them with a little bit of the paint. I like to carry my colors through. So if I have a purple, like this this deep purple I'm using, I like to come back and make sure I carry it through the rest of my painting in some way. And in this case, I chose to put it into the shadows of the rocks. So while we let that settle up here for just a moment here, be painting. Whatever's easiest, whatever you like, do it that way. So we're just going to come in and put a few. Do not worry too much about, you know, that it's perfect and looks like a rock because when we're done, it's going to look like what it's supposed to look like. Right now, it's kind of like at that stage of, oh my gosh, what am I doing? <laughs> Is this really... Um, going to be a blue bonnet picture, and yes, it's really going to be a blue bonnet picture. So, um, now the fun, these wonderful little Q-tips. I don't like Q-tips in my ears. <laughs> my daughter and my husband are always using these things, and I don't like them very much. Um, I always am afraid I'm going to um, end up with some of these fuzzies stuck in my ear and never be able to get it out. I, I think it was a phobia from when I was a kid. I knew a kid that got some of that stuck down in their ear and had to have it removed and it was just quite traumatic, I think. So anyway, um, we have this and what we're going to do is we're going to mix, um, three shades of purple, our purple blue. We're going to use our small palette knife, um, just kind of wipe it off, make sure it doesn't really have too much paint left on it from when we did the sky. Um, and you're going to take your um, phthalo cyanine blue, okay, and we're going to add a little bit of the um, quinacrinone magenta, okay? And we're going to add that to it. And it's going to turn, I'm going to pull this up so you can actually see how much I'm mixing. It's going to turn this kind of a, a deep kind of purple uh, color. It's really... It's really quite amazing, and it really, once you get it onto your canvas, it really looks a lot like um, our blue bonnets. Um, we're going to add a little bit more. Not a whole lot. I'm not using a whole lot. Um, okay. So we have that color. All right. And then we're going to take some of our white, about pea size. Um, and we're going to put that down. I'm going to take some of this mixture we just made here and add it to our white. Okay. And we're going to get that lighter shade of blue. See that? Just mix that. Doesn't have to be perfect. 
because um, we're going to be dipping a Q-tip in that. Okay, and then we're going to take some more of our blue, okay, and we're going to mix some of that purple that we have and watch how this color changes. It becomes kind of like a sky blue, that sky blue that you see um, in the dark night where it looks black, but it's really, it's not black, it's blue. Okay, so we have those three shades. And then we'll add our highlights with our white when we get done. If you want more of the magenta, you can add that in here. I like kind of a bluish purple. Um, this is, these two colors I will primarily use a lot. This will be used on this side where it's going to be darker on the right side of your canvas. Um, I hope I've explained that well enough. If not, let me know and I'll go back over it, okay? So, I'm going to take our Q-tip, okay? If you have Q-tips that are extra fuzzy, you can pull off some of that, um, but just make sure, okay? And then we're going to lay in our darkest color. And um, so our darkest blue, our darkest purple, we're going to just dab it into the paint like so. See how I have that right there? Okay. And then we're going to come in where we put all those little purple marks on the board. That's where we're going to make our shape of our blue bonnet. Now look, individually, you see these blue bonnets are kind of straight. They're like spires. Um, they kind of fluff out a little bit. Sometimes they're, you know, a little fatter near the bottom, but for the most part, they're spire shaped. So we're going to dab back and forth kind of in a crisscross pattern um, and then come back in and fill with our other colors. So don't make all of your little dabs right in a row. You want to alternate them out, leaving space in between so you can come back and add other colors. And think about where the dark side of your painting is going to be. If, if the light is coming this way, then the right side is going to be lighter. Well, this is the left side. The left side is going to be lighter than the right side. Okay? Just think of where the shadow falls. If your shadows fall behind, then the front should be light. If the shadow falls in front, then it should be the opposite, okay? And since this is nighttime, um, or this is portrayed to be nighttime, most of our shadow is falling in the ground and in the lower sections of our flower. With more of the moonlight or the the fading sun hitting the tops of our um, blue bonnets, okay? All right, so we have paint. I'm going to dab it on here. I'm just checking to make sure you can actually see. I'm going to start with this one here. So I'm just going to hit one, two, and just kind of dab it down, okay? And then I'm going to get some more paint. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to do another one. Okay. And another one. And see right now you're just thinking, oh my gosh, this looks awful. What did we do here? Trust me, there's a method to the madness. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so we're just going to dab this color. Okay. more on here. Let's go over to this one. And don't worry, I know it's in the dark spot and you can't really see it just yet, but you will. You'll see it when we're done because we'll have all these colors blended and mixed. Okay? Okay. Okay. 
don't think about it. Just, just go on it and watch what happens. Don't be afraid. Just have fun. Make dabby little circles. Okay? Same here. And as they recede off into the back, the ones that are behind the other ones, they're not all right out front. So our, our, our dabs are going to get smaller. They're not going to be, um, it's going to look further away the smaller we make an object. So as we get in here and do these, use just the corners rather than the full Q-tip. And it will still give you the same effect. And you can roll your Q-tip in the paint like so to get it on the edges if you don't have enough and give it that Q-tippy tip that we always see um, just like that. So then we can come in and we can dab, 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 just a little bit here and there. Okay, and we have two really close together and like this one's gonna be way off in the very back. Um, so wherever you put yours doesn't have to be the same as mine. Um, oh, and I got some green on that and I can just wipe it off and come back with some more blue. So we go in and do all of these little pieces. Um, with our blue. Okay. So I'm just getting more paint coming in here. Okay. And Here, this one's going to be a little further off in the back. This one's right up front, so it's going to be a lot of blue. I need more blue. We're going to have a lot, big, spiky, not really spiky, what are they? Um, just fluffy kind of flowers. And now I know you might be having a hard time seeing. Um, I'm going to lift this up a little bit so I can kind of show you. See how that's looking right there? Okay. So once we get all that blue in, we're going to go and add our next light color. So I have a couple more here. I want to just do like... Not really wanting it to um, be too big. I kind of want it this one I think needs a little bit more blue in there. And we have this one here. Don't worry if you go over your greens like I just did here, that's okay. Um, because it's going to all be blended together at the end. Okay? And all these colors, there's green in those flowers, there's green in those stems. I only have a couple more here that we need to add this color to. I bring that one all the way up because that just would look so pretty sticking out right there. Okay, and wipe off the excess that I don't want. Let's see if like this one needs a little bit more. Okay. Oh, and maybe one here that you can't quite see just faded off way in the the very back back. Okay. And this one here. Okay. All right. So I have that one done. I'm going to set this Q tip aside because I want another one for um, my next color. So we're going to take that lighter blue that I did up. 
that I showed you how to make. And I'm just going to swirl my Q-tip in it, just like so. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to start doing the same thing here. I'm just going to kind of dab and dab and dab. Just dab. Okay? And add some more paint. And I'm going to come back in and just kind of dab. Just dab it. <laughs> And go back up it, smooth some of those paints out, that paint out, and by doing that, what happens is you create highlights and midtones um, in your flower. So it's not it. It then becomes more cohesive and looks like you spent. A significant amount of time creating these and you didn't you just you used a q-tip um, so it's okay just go down and then do that and don't give up on it I know at this point you're probably thinking what the heck <laughs> I promise once we get ready to put the the white and other colors in here you're going to be like, oh my goodness, this is fantastic. I love this. Look at what I did. Look at what I created. God has created each one of us to be a creative being. We are created in his image, so we are creative um, because he is creative. Now, we may not be able to form a, oh, Greg, oh, I had not heard. Thank you for letting me know. I absolutely adored Betty. Um, I'll have to give Leslie a call later. Thank you. I'm so sorry. My condolences. Um, she was a wonderful, wonderful woman. Hmm. Hmm. Father, just be with the Ridgeway family um, today as they, they go through everything that they're going through. I just thank you for um, the fact that um, they know and love you um, and that you're with them. Um, that your peace and comfort would be around them um, and uh, that you would give them all wisdom and guidance right now. So, yeah. Um, okay. Oh, well, I know Betty, and Betty uh, would be absolutely joyful right now um, with the Lord, and um, so, uh, yeah. All right, so we're just going to continue on here, um, and just making those little smudges uh, with our Q-tip, uh, and... Um, paying attention to where you place that blue. Um, just, you know, if you have too much or the white when we add it, since we're going to be adding wet on wet, that white is going to be more of um, uh, what's the word I want? It's going to um, really help um, bring out the definition of the petals because we'll take more care in adding that white. Okay? So, um, so here we go. Let's just keep going. This takes the longest um, amount of time to do and I apologize. When I originally set out to do this, I didn't realize just how long it took to, to make all these uh, little flower petals um, I just I thought it would wouldn't take nearly as long but it does it takes longer especially 
when you're talking. <laughs> I should start playing some music while we're doing this. Um, and if you lose, like I lost some of my darker blues there, when we come back through, we can take our other one and we can um, add in some more of our darker color um, over the top of our lighter colors um, just to help in case, you know, it's we've lost some of the color, okay? So don't, don't freak out too much if your colors disappear on you while you're doing this. It happens. Um, it happens to me. So, um, anyway, okay, so I'm just going to go in and add a little bit here on that one, and then some more here, and that one that's supposed to be way in the back kind of fades off, same here, okay, and more of that blue and right now I'm using the edge a lot just because I don't want to cover up my q-tips kind of mangled so I'm kind of just using the edge of that to kind of smoosh my paint in okay and I'm going to add a little bit more of this blue in here Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so some more over here. And just rotate it around. If you feel like, you know, your shapes are getting stagnant, you can you can rotate um, with your um, with your Q-tip. You can just kind of rotate it around a little. Um, and that will help a lot. Um, so here we go, some more up here, and this one, well I know I just got some green in there because I'm thinking of something else and not thinking of what I'm doing, but that's okay. go in here and do some more on this one and you can take a lot of time to do these it's um, uh, I'm gonna actually add a little bit of water to my q-tip these seem a little bit different I got different ones this time um, yeah, there we go. It comes off a little bit easier. And that one's way off in the back there. So is that. I need a little bit more of my blue. Okay. Okay. I'm going to come in here and just add in some more. Oh, that's a different shade, but oh, and I got some of that pink, but that's okay. See, you don't have to, this one's kind of like behind it. Um, I think that Q-tip just had it. All right, so some more of the blue, and we're going to come in here and just kind of dab that into that. And Grab some more blue. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. So I want to add just a little bit more up in here and over here because it's a different shade 
And that's the fun part about this. You can actually mix up a whole bunch of different shades and add it to your painting and then go back in and just pop it in wherever you think your little flower would like to have a little bit of a different shade of blue and nobody will know that you just mixed up the wrong shade of blue okay Okay, so how we doing? Is everybody with me? You got all your flowers done at this point? Let me know so I know where we're at and um, I can keep moving on um, ahead of you, but I don't want to get too far ahead of you. This is looking really nice. I like, this one doesn't have as many as the other one does. Um, and I like how they look. Um, okay. All right. So now get a clean Q-tip. Um, on this one, you do want to add a little bit of clean water if you can, just and then kind of um, twist it out some because this is where you're going to get uh, a little bit of fun with the white. Okay, so we're just going to dab into our white paint, get the tip, just the tip, and you're lightly going to come in and just kind of kind of dab at different spots just on the top and then you can come back if you get too much like I did there you can come back and lift it off and just kind of go down the tip of the blue bonnet okay and if you get too much that's okay we go back in and we add um, one of our other colors. The best thing to do is let it dry first and see if you like how it is. If you don't, if something really just bugs you, you can come back in afterwards and use some of that um, blues, some of the blues that we made up. So here we're just going to get, if you feel like you have too much paint, you can just dampen it off or dab it off onto your, your palette. Okay, and then come back in and just a little bit here and there. Okay. And don't forget to go like through the middle. And as you go down, it's going to get lighter and lighter. And you can come back up um, and touch over the same spot you were at and kind of spread it out. I don't know if you can see how I'm doing that, but just dab it. And spread that paint just a little bit more because each time you press on that paint you lift some of that paint off and then you put it back down again and since this particular white is translucent and not opaque that color still will be able to shine through remember on these that are supposed to be in the back we're gonna have little white because they're not going to show as much. Um, so we can come in here and we can use what's left on our, our brush or our Q-tip. Um, I did. That was the blue that I put on D that was the darker blue. I mixed up the one blue with the purple um, so that if you didn't have the magenta and you only had purple, you could use that. We will be going back in um, in some spots and adding some more blue. So either blue, whichever one you have. Okay. Um, so we're just going to add some more of this white. Just lightly dabbing it onto our canvas. Not really 
you know, too crazy, a little bit of, little bit of paint, not covering everything up. Um, we just, and if you miss some areas earlier, and come back in, make sure you hit the stem area. On occasion, leave some of the stem peeking through, just like there really would, would be if it were a real flower. Okay. And some of your flowers are going to look like they're right on top of each other. And that's okay. All right. bit more of that white down a few of these spots okay and I'm gonna come in here and add some of that white from here come back over this way right there because I'm not not too not disappointed but I wanted to have a little bit more oomph and it just didn't have enough oomph and that's what you have to decide on your your painting do you need more or do you need less um, this is a reflection of you um, and what makes you happy so remember, it's just what makes you happy, okay? So I'm going to put a little bit more white on a few of these over in this way. And don't forget, you have those going up, down, up, down. So you want to <clears throat> always move, constantly be moving your brush. Don't. Don't just, you know, stay in one spot. Move it around so that, um, you know, your eye doesn't get um, distracted, okay? Um, and things don't become stagnant. So if you need to stop and take a break, stand up, stretch, um, refresh your eyes, and come back and look at your work again, you can do that. And get a sip of your drink or whatever you have. Um, and I can just come back in and you can go back to work. Um, I often will take mine and stick it out away from me so I can kind of see um, what things are looking like. And since I have a light um, uh, coming down on my piece, um, I can't always see for the glare. Um, so I'll lift it up or step back and take a look um, so I can kind of see where it's at and what, what I need to do to, to make it more pleasing um, or, you know, see if it, it's making me happy. If it's not making me happy, then <laughs> something needs to happen to it. And what needs to happen? I need to look at it and see what did I do wrong? Is it... Uh, the color, is it the shape, is it the placement, uh, do I just need to get a new idea, um, you know, what's, what's happening. So like here, I just did a common mistake, but I want to show this because I need to bring this one out in front of that one. So I'm going to add in this white. D, that blue that I mixed up earlier that had the purple in it, this is where I'm going to come in with this because I need this to be a different color than this blue bonnet back here because it's just not standing out and away from this one. They look like two that kind of got um, morphed by um, some strange, you know, GMO seed. 
So <laughs> anyway, I'm going to come in with this other blue and I'm going to start dotting that around in there with the white so I can get a different color and it's more, more near the front. And I'm going to come and grab some of that magenta because I want to and it's my painting and I can. And I'm going to come in and I'm just going to dab a little bit in there with that blue. And then come get some more of that blue and come back in. And this one's just going to have to be a little bit of a, a stranger shape than, than the others. And that's okay. There's one in every crowd, right? Um, there's always one that's a little different. I'm going to come back in with some of that white. And I can always go and fix it later. But now it stands away from the other blue bonnet. It's not so one color, okay? So um, we keep going with the white, doing the same thing that we've been doing. Um, and um, so how are y'all doing? Are you, are you happy? Are you pleased? Um, tell me what you're thinking. I'm just going to add some little colors down here near the bottom. These could just be wood violets, you know, whatever. Love wood violets. I have some growing in my yard. Thanks to a, a lovely neighbor that I have, Alex. She shares her plants with me from time to time. And um, over the years, she has given me wood violets and all kinds of, of fun. And see, so just by dabbing that in, just a little bit of color could be blue bonnet petals that fell to the ground. Could be the blue, um, the blue violet, uh, wood violets that I was saying. Um, it's whatever I want it to be. It's my painting. Um, so yours can be whatever you want it to be because it's your painting. It looks like my my husband might be on here with us. <laughs> well, isn't that a surprise? Um, so I'm going to get a little bit more white and come back in and go to some of those other flowers and just begin to dab that white in where I want it. Okay, and the same here, just going to go in. This one's kind of far off in the distance. So I'm not going to add too much white to it. Um, now I'm going to come over here to this one. And this one's a little bit more still in the fading daylight. So it's going to have a little bit more white on it than the others do. Um, this is that one that had that green. So I'm going to come in here with this blue. And I'm going to put some of this blue as it shadows and then come back in with the lighter blue again so I don't want all that green showing um, it's nice and you know if you know our blue bonnets you know they don't have a lot of green um, at the flower just the flower petal and add a little bit here to the, this one and some over here to this one. Okay. Michael doesn't seem to be wanting to join us, D. He's there lurking on the outside. <laughs> Checking in on his wife. Um, okay, so now we're going to come in with that white again. And we're going to just kind of dab. Make our, our spires. Um... Okay, a little bit more here. There we go. That's perfect. Okay, a little bit more for white. Oh, it just doesn't want to come up there. And then come in here. 
add a little bit more. And then we're kind of bring that. And we're going to come down. We're going to come down over the top. Because I want a little bit more of that white in him, this one. Okay, and then I've got one way off here. Can't quite tell it's there, but it's there. Um, and then some of that white in here on this one. Okay. There we go. Okay. And same here. A little bit more on this one. That's okay. I got a little green in there. Not a big deal. Okay. So what do y'all think? Are you happy with your your um, blue bonnets? Are you liking them? Okay. And then we're going to come in here and we're going to... Um, add some stems. We don't really have any stems and you're just going to use uh, a little bit of that darker green that we did earlier and just roll it, a little bit, scrape a little bit off and get it on the back of your um, palette, palette knife, excuse me. And on these ones that are down here, I didn't have us put any in here um, and I should have and kind of want to come in with just a little bit more um, oh, it's not doing what I want it to do right now I want it to kind of slide there we go to give me kind of a, a flower sh a petal or leaf shape, excuse me. <laughs> I could not get that out of my mouth. Um, so just using the tip, just kind of bring it in underneath and pull down. So bring it here and pull down, and then you can just come in and then do the same. You're going to just bring it, bring it down like so. Um, just in a few spots where, you know, um, your stems just don't seem to, maybe just they're disappearing or whatever. And it's okay if it gets on your rocks, remember, all that should be dry. Um, and then, you know, it's very, this is meant to be kind of an abstract type. Um, so it's okay if your paint just kind of, you know, is thick, like I'm making it here. Um, that's the whole idea. This is, to me, this is the fun part because you come in and you just mix up your paint, you get it on your palette, and then you just come in and voila, you have incredible piece of art that you did all on your own with a simple tool. It's a simple tool. Okay. And then you can go back in if you decide later, um, if you look at it during the day and you decide, oh, you know what, my, I need a, a little bit more white um, highlights. You can come back in, like right here I can tell, just because I've done this kind of a painting a lot. I love blue bonnets. And I can tell that I don't have enough white on this one. It's kind of like, it just seems to fade into the painting. So you'll be able to tell if you need more and just, you know, if your Q-tip is sticking, either wet it or get a little bit more paint on it. Okay, roll it. You don't have to stay 
in one direction. Just roll that across. This is meant to have texture and a thickness um, and it's not going to be perfect, okay? So, if you like this, um, please share with your friends. Um, make sure you sign it. Uh, take a picture and um, post it up on um, the Artful link uh, on Facebook or share with me on Instagram at Artful Link um, or um, you know, um, send me a picture and I'll post it for you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad you joined me tonight and I hope you're blessed um, this evening and um, I hope you guys have a great week and I'll see you here next week, same time.